Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to talk about two different ways that you can do these nice two-tone wipe-on die jobs. So that's right, I'm about to take you through the process that I used to do this die job on the front of this guitar using Bellin's NGR die stain, two different colors. I did a sand back version on the front, I'll explain that as we go through. Um, in voiceover because of course I'm gonna wear a mask, it's alcohol based. And then on the back I did something similar but instead of a sand back I did a white back. It's a different technique, it gives you kind of a different look and you have to approach it a slightly different way. I will explain all that right away in this video. These are the two colors that we're gonna be using on this. The blood red and lemon yellow from Bellin. The Solar Lux NGR dye stain, some of my favorite dyes. If you are looking for something like this, they're available in the description in the Amazon link, so feel free to check them out there. Make sure you wear gloves, and uh, you can apply these just with a shop towel like I'm doing here. I'm really gonna emphasize the gloves. This stuff stains like crazy. It stains your hands, it soaks into the wood very easily, so it's a great product for that. But uh, yeah, you're really gonna wanna make sure you're wearing those gloves. You can see that this blood red is a very dark color. It's what I'm going for in this one as a base. I'm gonna put it on the front and you'll see me sand it back so that it kind of just stays in some areas, stays in the grain and everything. More as an accent and blending technique than anything else. If you're looking for a very vibrant color, you can do that. You'll just need a different red than this blood red. As you can see, it's very deep and dark and kind of gives an ominous tone of to it if, uh, if that makes any sense in this context if you use it on its own. The way that we're going to combine it with the yellow we're going to end up with more of a warm orange tone at the end so not a super vibrant color but definitely still a very colorful finish. Now as you can see this is a very quick process it's very easy to apply and I'm getting lots of coverage I'm just putting a little bit onto this shop towel and I'm wiping it on and getting a ton of surface area covered with this very rapidly. The stuff that I put on at the beginning there, already dry. This product dries amazingly quickly. So I speed this uh, this footage up so that you don't have to watch me do the whole thing like that. But this product dries super fast just like any other alcohol-based dye would. If you want something that's going to soak in for a little longer, take a look at some water-based dyes or possibly some oil-based dyes. Alcohol-based in particular tends to dry very quickly and you can see the look that we get from it right here. I think that looks pretty cool, but now we're going to take some of that off of there so that we can use our multicolor accenting technique to get a different hue and some accented grain patterns. The grain pattern in a wood like this comes from a combination essentially of closed and open grain. So when we sand back like this, we're sanding the stuff off of the closed grain, the stuff that hasn't soaked in as far. And we're leaving the open grain with all of the stain that it has absorbed. All of that dye that's soaked in there is going to stay in there a little deeper and give us that accented tone. Now, this stuff can be removed another way, which is what I'm going to show you on the back, involving basically wiping it off with solvent. But because the same solvent is used in both of the colors, you'll notice when I go to apply the second color here, it's actually going to remove some of this as well and you'll see that come up on the cloth as I go to do it. It's also going to spread around some of the red as we go. So you can kind of combine the sanding technique with that and you can get a very interesting effect. I went in with some 220 grit initially there to sand back and now I believe I've moved up to 400 grit to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. I'm making sure it's not perfectly even because I want a more interesting kind of slightly modeled look, not so much as I'll get with the white back, but you'll see that when we come to it. And here you can see, if you look carefully, as I turn the rag over that uh, there's some red on there that's coming off. And if you're watching the surface, you can also see that the red is moving around a little bit. And as I apply the yellow, it kind of helps to even it out and give me this cool orange brown tone. And this is something that we can make deeper and a little bit more vibrant as we go by applying more coats. So you'll see as I go over it again here, you can see where it overlaps. I'm getting kind of a stronger yellow hue and I'm still moving red around a little bit and taking a little bit off. So I'm lightening things up on the red and adding a little bit of yellow and getting a slightly more 
vibrant look as we progress. I'm using a nice circular motion here to make sure that I get it as even as I can for this color because I want to make sure that my yellow looks even, but I can go in and continue to wipe coats on this and continue to move things around until I get the look that I want. And if at any point it ends up darker than I'm looking for, it's a simple matter of sanding it back a little bit to lighten it up again. And then you can come in and add some more yellow as necessary to get the look that you're going for. So because of the way this stuff dries, within a few minutes I'm able to put on these two colors and several coats. And here is the look that I end up with ready to go. I can go in and seal this now after just an hour or two and uh, continue. Now, as I said, if it's looking a little dark for your taste, you can always sand it back. So I'm in here now with some 600 grit, just sanding it back lightly, taking a little bit off, and then I'm gonna come in with the yellow again and make this color slightly more vibrant. I'm also kind of evening it out a bit. I had a little extra depth of the red on that top side, so I sand that a little bit more aggressively than I do the bottom portion. And when I'm done, I should be able to get a nice even tone by applying another coat or two of the yellow to my liking. So we're going to get a bit of a close up here and you'll see kind of how that pulls out that nice yellowy brown appearance. I've still got some accenting from the red there even though it's a little bit more difficult to tell on the sanded surface. You can see where it's coming through as I apply the yellow. Now consider yourselves warned if you're going to apply this yellow dye right over top of something light like a maple and you're not going to do any of the red work underneath, you're not going to end up with this kind of deep, rich, dual color orange brown that we're getting here. You're going to end up with more of a straight yellow type look. In a lot of cases, I can see why that would be what you're going for, something nice and vibrant. You can see that this is what I was going for here, and uh, the dual color approach is kind of how you end up getting a finish like this. So that ought to about cover us for the front put on as many coats as you want for something like this and really you're just going to continue to build up a deeper richer color until you reach essentially full saturation. Uh, it's kind of an odd concept when it comes to these dyes because the wood will continue to absorb it for quite a while so you can continue to deepen this. Keep in mind that adding dye aside from the fact that it can pull out some of the prior color will never actually lighten your finish. Adding more of the same kind of dye will of course darken it and no matter how light the color dye is that you go with, all it can actually do is darken except to the extent that it actually pulls other tones out. The same applies for candy paint if you happen to be working with that at some point. It only ever darkens as you add more layers. The only way to lighten it is to actually remove stuff. So this is the tone that we're left with on the front. You can see that accenting from the red in there and I think it's it's left us with a really cool finish. Now on the back I've gone ahead and done the red in advance and I've kind of applied it a little bit streaky because I'm looking for a modeled effect here, kind of a, a cool wild texture type thing as opposed to your more classic grained look. I'm going in with some methanol now which is an alcohol based solvent essentially. Uh, and as you know from what I've discussed already, this is an alcohol-based dye. So the methanol pulls some of it out and also moves it around. And the way that I'm doing this, I, you can do this in streaks, you can do this in circles, you can actually create kind of artistic patterns doing this. I'm being fairly random about it and just applying swirls and you can see what's happening. It's pulling some off, it's moving some around, and as it pushes stuff sideways, uh, and moves dye around it can actually create darker and lighter areas so this is kind of a very unique effect and of course if you're into more of a classic look this probably won't be to your liking all that much but it's good for you to know that it is an option particularly if you're going for something specific like a streaky finish or you're trying to put in almost a more deliberate type of pattern you can do it this way you just need to be careful how you do so the methanol dries very, very quickly. It evaporates at an extremely fast rate. So you can do this without having to worry about any of the swelling or other issues that you might encounter using water with a similar technique. Now I'm coming in with the yellow, as you can see, and continuing, because I've gone in with the methanol and wet that red back down, I'm continuing to move that color around and really continue to get this weird effect where I've got red kind of pushed around randomly and my yellow intermixed in there and sitting on top of it as well. 
So if I wanted to do something like a sunrise effect or something like that with kind of a cool streaky bottom to it, I could do that using this sort of technique and it would look, I think, a lot more interesting and slightly more abstract than if you try to just go ahead and stain one area red, one area yellow, and then mix them together. Something to note with this one, much like I went back and sanded the yellow after on the front, you can of course go back and use the methanol or the sanding technique to pull some off of this type of finish as well. So if I wanted to after this, I could go in with the methanol and wipe some more patterning into this and then come back once again with the yellow and apply another coat. There's any number of techniques and layers that you can do with this and you don't have to really worry the way you would if you were applying a ridiculous number of coats of paint because this kind of stuff doesn't build up, it just soaks in. So as I said, many, many options with this second technique and you can use them in combination as well. The uh, sky is the limit, so to speak. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned. What we're going to do in the next one is put a lacquer finish on this, and I'm going to specifically show you how to make your lacquer dry faster. So subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see how I do that. It's going to be a great tip, I think. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and see you next time.